Welcome to the part 2 of this PLC programming session. Let's discuss the PLC programming for this project. As you can see that we have added two more functions in the program. Auto sequence and control logic functions. Let's discuss these functions. In the network 1, on the rising edge of this start filling sequence bit M10.0, if the silo 1 is selected, and rotary valve feedback as 0.1 is on, or in other case, if the silo 2 is selected, and rotary valve diverted way feedback as 0.0, .0 is on, it will set on the start auto sequence bit M10.1. When we turn on, this stop silo filling sequence, on the rising edge of this bit, it will reset the start sequence bit M10.1. Same way, on the rising edge of stop sequence completed bit M12.0, it will reset the start sequence bit M10.1. In the network number 2, if this start auto sequence bit is on, it will start 5 second timer, once this timer is over, it will turn on this control bit 0. As you can see that, we have used this control bit 0 in the control logic function. As this bit 0 turns on, and the pressure in the line is ok, it will turn on the blower Q0.6. In the network 3, as the control bit 0 turns on, it will start the 5 second timer, after this timer is over. It will turn on control bit 1. If we see the network 2 of the control logic function, as this control bit 1 turns on, and air blower is running. It will turn on the air lock rotary valve Q0.7. Next we will come back to the auto sequence function, as this control bit 1 turns on, in the network 4, we have the air lock run feedback as 0.4 and air lock hopper is not full, it will start the 5 seconds timer, once this timer is over, it will turn on this start control bit 2 M10.4. This control bit 2, turns on the tube screw conveyor Q1.0. Next we have the control bits 3, 4 and 5 these bits will turn on step by step, we have not used these control bits in the control logic. Next in the network 4, if high level sensor of the silo 1 or silo 2 turns on, on the rising edge it will set on the bit M11.2 which is start stop sequence. Once the stop sequence completed bit M12.0 turns on, this will reset the start stop sequence bit M11.2. In the network 9, as the bit M11.2 turns on, this starts the 5 second timer, as this timer is over, it will turn on the stop bit 0 M11.3. As you can see that, we have used the normal close contact of this stop bit 0 in the network 3. This will turn off the tube screw conveyor Q1.0. As you can see that, in the network 10, stop bit 0 will turn on the stop bit 1, after the 5 seconds delay, we have used the normal close contact of this stop bit 1, this contact opens and turns off the airlock Q0.7. Next again this stop bit 1, will turn on the stop bit 2, after 5 seconds delay. As you can see that, we have used the normal close contact of the stop bit 2 in the network 1, as this contact opens it will turn off the air blower Q0.6. Next the stop bits 3, 4 turns on step by step. In the last the stop sequence completed bit M12.0 turns on. This bit M12.0 reset the start stop sequence bit M11.2. If we come back to the network 1, this bit M12.0 is used, on the rising edge of this bit, it will reset the start auto sequence bit M10.1, it will stop whole process and sequence of the silo filling stops. So this is the program for the today's project, we will upload this in the PLC and let's see how does it works. We have uploaded the program in the PLC, we will open the tank selection logic function and monitor the ladder logic. Let's select the silo number 2, for filling by turning on the bit M3.3, from the network number 2. Now the silo number 2 is selected. As you can see that, the reverse pulsing controller number 2 and now on in the network number 3. In the network 4, the valve diverted way command Q0.3 is energized to send the material to the silo number 2. In the network 5, you can see that the dust collector fan number 2, for the silo number 2 is now running. Next we will open the control logic and auto sequence functions and monitor the ladder logic. As you can see the silo 2 selection bit is on and valve diverted way feedback bit I0.0 .0 is also closed. Now let's start the silo filling sequence by turning on the bit M10.0. As soon as we turn on this bit, it will hold on the start auto sequence bit M10.1, and filling sequence starts.
you can see in the control logic function as the control bit 0 turns on, it turns on the air blower output Q0.6. Next after the delay of the 5 seconds the control bit 1 turns on, and this turns on the rotary air lock valve Q0.7. In network 3, after 5 seconds delay, the control bit 2 turns on, and it turn on the tube screw conveyor Q1.0. Now the material starts to transfer towards the silo number 2. Next we will go to the network 8, here we have the logic to start the stop sequence. As the high level sensor for the silo 2, turns on it will start the stop sequence. As soon as the stop bit 0 turns on, it will turn off the tube screw conveyor Q1.0. After 5 seconds the stop bit 1 turns on, and its normal close contact opens and turns off the rotary airlock valve Q0.7. After next 20 seconds, the stop bit 2 turns on and this turn off the air blower Q0.6. In the last stop sequence completed bit M12.0 turns on. This stop sequence completed bit reset, the start stop sequence bit M11.2. In the network number 1, this same bit M12.0 reset the start auto sequence bit M10.1, and whole sequence stops after the silo 2 is full with material. So, this is a small example of the material handling, I hope you have learned some thing from it. Before leaving please make sure to subscribe my channel and press the bell icon for more upcoming video, till next time take care and goodbye.